Hi folks, this is Paul from Pinnacle English Learn and today I'm going to focus on the IELTS speaking test and I'm just going to give you some tips to hopefully help you maximize your score on that test. Okay, so firstly the test itself is 11 to 14 minutes long so overall it's about a 15 minute experience between yourself and an examiner so it's just one-on-one -on -one and the test itself is recorded. So part one is probably the easiest section of the test and in part one you get to talk about general topics like your hometown or your free time and you get to talk about yourself in part one. So it's, it's a lot easier than the other two parts, particularly part three. Part two is again, you get to talk about yourself but you've got a task card and you've got to speak uninterrupted for about one to two minutes. I've highlighted two minutes there because it's recommended that uh, candidates or we actually tell our students to talk through for the entire two minutes and just wait for the examiner to interrupt you and tell you that you've spoken enough. So speak through for the entire two minutes and in fact when you practice you should speak for at least two minutes. Use that prep time, that one minute to take notes so you've got a minute to prepare before you actually um, talk for about two minutes and use that prepare, preparation time to actually make notes and um, use them to help you to actually continue to speak and, and to help you if you run out of ideas. Part three is probably the most challenging part of the test. It's the last section and in part three candidates need to speak about, rather than speaking about themselves, candidates or IELTS candidates need to speak about people in, in a particular country or people in two countries uh, and they need to speak um, in a more general way and they need to stay away from talking about themselves. If you do speak about yourself, the examiner you'll notice will steer you away from that and get you to talk about perhaps people in your country and, and generally speaking, what do you think? Um, the questions are linked to the topic in part two. So let's say in part two you've got to talk about gift giving or, or giving a gift, a gift that you gave that perhaps was very important. In part three the topic would be gift giving and you know you may end up speaking about things like international aid for example. By the way in part uh, three if, if there's something, if there's a word, a curly word or a difficult word that you don't understand in part three, ask for clarification. So what does international aid mean? What does progressive tax mean? Some examiner tips. In part one they've got a pretty strict script for speaking in part one. Uh, but you know it's no big deal because in part one the questions are fairly straightforward. They're not too difficult, they're not too challenging. Um, in part one the examiner can repeat a question once um, but they can't really rephrase a word. Uh, sorry, they can't really rephrase a question in part one. However, they can rephrase one word. So if there's a word you don't understand, you could just say, what does blah blah blah, what does international aid mean or what does that mean? And they can actually rephrase one word but they can't rephrase the entire question. Okay? I guess the whole point of us telling you this is so that you don't feel scared if you're lost about a particular question or topic. You can ask for clarification. In part one the examiner might repeat a question if the student goes off topic or if the candidate goes off topic. In other words, if you start talking about something completely different in part one, uh, the examiner might repeat the question just to get you to, um, to answer the question and to stay on task with that particular question. <clears throat> yeah, in part two, so part two is when you get that task card and you've got one minute to prepare. Remember in task two, practice with topics that you're not really familiar with, so unfamiliar topics. Um, the reason why we suggest this is because a lot of the time, even if a student has a really high level of English or a really good command of English when it comes to speaking, they might get tongue-tied or they might get anxious on the day and not be able to produce um, lengthy sentences or information related to the task card 
because they've simply not practiced with topics that they're not familiar with. So really it comes down to conditioning. Condition yourself to really practice with topics that you're not familiar with. And in part to make sure you speak through for the entire two minutes. So when you are doing practice leading up to that IELTS test, and we do recommend that you do practice with a qualified teacher or with an IELTS specialized teacher, we do recommend that you speak through for the entire two minutes, particularly if you're looking to get, you know, a, quite a high mark for the IELTS speaking section. And in part three, do not talk about yourself in part three. Just generalize um, your answers by talking about people in your country and perhaps compare and contrast that to people in this country if, if you're living in Australia at the time of taking the IELTS test. And um, in part three, don't try to memorize answers. You know, the examiners are not stupid. They will pick up on memorized answers. So what we recommend you do is you treat it like a two-way conversation. Now, the examiner is not your friend, so it's kind of like a semi-formal conversation. Not super formal, but certainly not informal. And treat it like a two-way conversation. And for this reason, we recommend that you don't memorize your answers and you really try and extend on your answers um, when you are answering questions in part three. Look, the examiner can rephrase the entire sentence in part three, which means there is a bit more flexibility in this part of the test when compared to, you know, part one. So bear that in mind. Bear in mind also in part three, you may get um, a word that you're not familiar with. Ask for clarification. OK, so what does international aid mean? What does progressive tax mean? OK, that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully that's helped you somewhat. And um, don't forget to check us out at PinnacleEnglishLearn.com. Uh, book a trial lesson and hopefully we can help you to achieve your score or your desired score on the IELTS test. Bye for now.